Hey, what's going on guys? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today I have the Azul Byte 3 Mini Windows 10 PC to do a quick review on. Now on paper it looks pretty good, but let's see how it performs. Inside of the box you get the power supply, the PC, some extra screws because it does have a 2.5 inch hard drive bay in the bottom, an IR remote, and your manual. On the front of the unit we have the power button and an IR receiver plus the Byte 3 logo. On one side, we have one USB 3.0 port, one USB 2.0 port, and a full-size SD card slot. On the rear of the PC, moving from the left to the right, we have a 3.5 millimeter audio jack, a Kingston lock right underneath it, two USB 3.0 ports, gigabit ethernet, HDMI, VGA, power in, a USB type C port, plus it also comes with an antenna for the Wi-Fi and Bluetooth built onto the box itself. On the other side, there's not a lot going on. There's a little ventilation here. This is a passively cooled unit. There is no fan included, but it does have a big heat sink in the top of the box. I went ahead and removed the bottom of the unit so we could take a look inside. It does have a SATA data cable and a SATA power cable, so we can use a 2.5 inch SSD or a 2.5 inch spinner drive. They also included an M.2 slot for an SSD. Now, I really wouldn't waste my money on a big SSD for a box like this. I would go with a mechanical drive. They're cheap, reliable, and it'll work perfect for a small PC like this. Now I think it's time to go over the main specs of the Byte 3. The CPU is an Intel Apollo Lake N3450. It's clocked at 1.1 gigahertz, but it does turbo up to 2.2 gigahertz. The GPU is a built-in Intel HD 500 up to 700 megahertz, four gigabytes of DDR3 RAM, but they are coming out with the eight gigabyte model. As for storage, it has a built-in 32GB eMMC. It also has an M.2 slot inside for an SSD and cables for a 2.5-inch SATA. Built-in Wi-Fi 802.11 BG in and AC. As you can see, it does have an antenna built into the box itself. Bluetooth 4.1, a USB Type-C port, three USB 3.0 ports, and two USB 2.0 ports. If you're looking to use just Ethernet and not Wi-Fi, you're in luck because it does have a gigabit Ethernet port. It also has that IR receiver on the front for the included remote. This came pre-installed with Windows 10 Pro. I'm also adding a 500 gigabyte mechanical drive. On their website, they claim that Linux can be installed. I have not tried it myself yet, but I might do that down the road. I think it's time to move over to Windows and test the performance. I'm gonna do some video playback using some 4K files in the stock media player. I'm also going to use them in Kodi. We'll do some YouTube video playback and I'll also test some games from Steam. Let's move over there now. All right, so here we are. I got it all set up. Installed a few things here. As you can see, we have the Intel Celeron N3450 at 1.1 gigahertz, but it does turbo up to 2.2. Four gigabytes of DDR3 RAM built in. It's soldered to the board, so you cannot upgrade it. It does have AC Wi-Fi, so you can pick up that 5G network, but I'm hooked up with Ethernet because in my house, I have so many Ethernet cables running around. It's more reliable for me, and it's faster. I didn't even bother installing Google Chrome. I'm going to be using the built-in Edge browser. Let's move over to YouTube. Now, this resolution is at 1080p. I can tell you right now that I hooked this up to my 4K 55-inch. It does work, but I notice it slowed down a lot trying to load these web pages if the resolution set at 4K. I'm gonna load this video up. I will set it to 4K even though it's on a 1080p display. Let's see how it performs. The sound works great as you can hear, but unfortunately I'm gonna to have to turn it off in a second just in case the music is copywritten. So the current resolution on YouTube is set to 4K. I do have the stats for geeks up on the screen here, zero drop frames. Now I understand running this on a 1080p display at 4K isn't true 4K, but it does give you an idea. I did test this on my 55 inch and it works great. But like I said, when loading the page up, it did take a little while longer. Now I'm going to test some 4K video playback in the stock Windows Media Player. I'll be running these from the internal 2.5 inch 500 gigabyte drive that I installed. 
These are my go-to benchmark videos. I have Big Buck Bunny by Blender, 30 FPS 4K and a 60 FPS 4K MP4 file. This is our 30 FPS version of Big Buck Bunny in 4K. Very smooth playback. Now I tried to run Fraps within Windows Media Player to show you the FPS, but it doesn't work like that. I will test these same videos using Kodi in just a second, but I wanted to show you that the built-in media player handles 4K video fine with this tiny box. All right, time to test out that 60 FPS version. Same video, just 60 FPS 4K. So the box handles those file types pretty well at 1080p. They are 4K videos, but my display is set to 1080. I would not buy this box for 4K video playback. If you want 1080, this is the perfect option for you. So this thing does have a very low power CPU built in. If you're looking for a little PC to do some web browsing, you know, email checking, video playback, this box will work for you. Now I wouldn't buy this for gaming or anything. I'm gonna show you why at the end of this video. But if you want something for basic web browsing, this thing's gonna work out great. I also installed Kodi for Windows. Now with the included IR remote, it's perfect for a tiny Windows Kodi box. I'll go ahead and launch it here. I'm gonna be testing those two same 4K videos inside of Kodi and I do have Fraps running so we can see the FPS in the top left hand corner. So I noticed something a little odd. When I move my cursor around on screen, the FPS jumps around. But when I go to a video to play it, it'll shoot right up to 60 FPS. I'm not sure what Fraps is reading here, but it's a little odd moving that cursor around in the main menu. This is the 60 FPS 4K Big Buck Bunny. couple drop frames here and there. Not too bad though. You could also just install Kodi add-ons and stream your favorite movies and TV shows if you're into that. This box would definitely handle it perfectly. Now I want to test a few PC games here. This is the original Skyrim on Steam. Everything's on low, 720p, and the rendering distance is set all the way to the minimum. Gameplay is horrible. 20 FPS. Now there's a chance you could pull off 30 if you went down to, let's say 600 by 800 in window mode, but then it's not really worth playing. It's only gonna get worse. The more NPCs are on screen, the more explosions are going on. To be fair, Azul does not advertise this as a gaming machine whatsoever, but let's face it. I mean, we get a little PC, we wanna see if a game's gonna play on it or not. Next up, Rocket League, 720p, everything's on the lowest of low. 10 FPS. I thought we would at least get 20 to 30 out of this little CPU on Rocket League, but guess I was wrong. Now I want to talk about emulation because that's going to be the first question. No, this will not run Dolphin. It's not going to run it at an acceptable frame rate whatsoever. It's not going to run God of War on PSP. Most of the PSP games are going to run decent at 1x PSP resolution. If you want to go for emulation on this, it will run older emulators like Atari 2600, SNES, even Project N64 should run at full speed. 
So that's it for this video, guys. I really appreciate you watching. The price tag on one of these is about $199 on Amazon. It's great for media streaming and web browsing. In my opinion, that's about it. Really appreciate you guys watching. If you could, hit that like button and subscribe. And like always, thanks for watching.